Vika, let's see you. Okay, so we are live. Like I said earlier, this is week three of OLS. This is our first cohort call. What will we be doing today? A quick overview of what we shall be doing. We're going to introduce ourselves with four easy prompts, which I will tell you in a moment. And then we will take some time to review the code of conduct, which is very dear to OLS. If you can, please go through the code of conduct for a moment. Just look through. But the quick summary of the code of conduct is treat each other respectfully. And later during the call, Malvika will be talking about some tools, such as the open canvas and the roadmap, which will be lots of talking, but I'm sure you will find it quite interesting. Before this meeting, we expect that you have your vision statement ready because in one of the breakout rooms, we will be talking about your vision statement. Also, we will be talking about your path to OLS. But for now, please put your names in the roll call because the introduction will go in the order of the names in the roll call. And also you can put the name of your project there as well and an emoji that describes your mood at the present moment. And also, if you feel comfortable, please put in your social handles as well. I see you already answering the icebreaker question. Please do the same. Thank you all so much. Also on line 72, you'll see that this call is being recorded and there are live transcripts available. You can click on the link just to get an idea of what's going on. Keep up with the accents and all. I mentioned earlier that we will be introducing ourselves. This is that moment. So in order to not take all of the time, we will just be saying our names, our location, the name of your project and your most recent hobby. We will be going in order of the roll call. So on roll call, you is first. So after you, she passes it on to Paz and then Paz passes it on to the next person and we keep going till we get to the last. I will stop talking now so that you can introduce herself. Hey folks, four words. My name is Yo. Uh, mi nombre es Johanna, not just Yo if you speak Spanish. Um, and my project is OLS. I'm OLS's executive director. Uh, location, Cambridge, UK. And most recent hobby, Nitty. Yeah, thank you for the unmuteness. Um, Paz, um, location Argentina, but I'm Chilean, to note it, I mean, make a note of that. <laughs> no, I love Argentina, by the way, but it's just, I miss Chile, I have to admit. And OLS, I do uh, a bit of the coordination. So if you have questions about the cohort, do ask me or ask in the channels um, and keep digging. <laughs> A most recent hobby, none. Sorry. Boring. <laughs> My name wait, is Malvika. Wait. Next one. Next one. Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry, Malvika. I'm passing this to Monica. Okay. Hi, I'm Monica. I am from Buenos Aires. Uh, our project is uh, Metadocencia. Um, most recent hobby. Uh, I like to uh, to play guitar. Okay, I'm going to stick with the roll call. I'm going to quickly introduce myself. Monica, I would like to hear your guitar. Please send us a video. 
Um, I'm Malvika. I'm based in London. My project is OLS, and also I have a day job at the Allen Turing Institute, where you would probably hear about a project called the Turing Way. And my most recent hobby, I, I think I might not have a recent hobby, but there's a book that I'm reading that, recommended, that was recommended by someone called Before the Coffee Gets Cold. Uh, it's really nice. And with that, I'll pass it to who's the next person? Marlo. Hi, I'm Malu. Um, I work at the Vrije Universiteit in Amsterdam um, and I work on a project for um, making data on corporate res social responsibility publicly available. And my most recent hobby is sort of a recurring hobby that has come back to me, which is um, cross-stitching. And I think I should everyone. pass it to someone, right? Yes, yes, yeah, sorry. Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Jan Kay. Uh, I was here at the last call last week, but I just thought I'd say hi today to see the other people here. Uh, I'm based in Cambridge, UK. Uh, my project is for the Reclaim Community Network, and we're building a searchable open data repository uh, of DNA collections. Um, and most recent, well, a hobby that I have is uh, rock climbing. Next Wonderful. I think I'm next on that list. I'm Conrad Carding. I live in Philadelphia. I guess uh, my most recent hobby is stand up paddling. And I really love coffee. Like, I have a problem with coffee. Uh, and I think Nicolas next. Hi, I'm Nicolas or Nico. I'm calling from Argentina. I'm part of Metadocencia. And my most recent hobby is probably carpentry, like doing things with good. Um, I do have all the tools, I don't have the space. So it's a dormant hobby for the moment, but I hope to jump into that very soon. Um, who's next? Um, Julian Nino. I'm next. Hi all, I'm Julian or Nino. I'm from Cordoba, Argentina. I am part of the Metal Sensia team too. And my hobby now is ceramics. Maria, you next. Um, hi, I'm Maria from Buenos Aires, Argentina. I'm also here for the Metal Sensia project. Um, my latest hobby is uh, reading graphic novels. And next is uh, Henry Count Evans. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> My name is Henry Count Evans. I teach journalism at the University of Eswatin, and the formerly known as uh, country known as the Kingdom of Swaziland. Now it's Eswatin. Uh, I'm here with the Teaching Methods Africa MOOC, where we are developing a handbook and a MOOC for media studies scholars to use when they are studying the media using computational methods. Um, thank you. I'll let you next. Thanks, Henry Count. So Henry Count and I are working together on the project uh, called the um, DigiMethods Africa MOOC and Handbook for media studies researchers to learn computational tools. And uh, my ho hobby is um, uh, mountain biking. I'm particularly fond of downhills. I don't know who's next. <laughs> Masibidi. Masibidi, sorry. Masibidi might have internet issue. Maybe it's load shedding. We have yes. uh, electricity blackouts quite a bit in South Africa. Yeah. I am sorry. Should I go next? Then? Go for it, Melly. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for letting us know. I will just yes. contact them with the recording. Yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, well, I'm Meli or Melissa, but you can call me Meli. I am connecting from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and I work with Metado Sensei too. And my most recent Robbie, well, I've tried lettering, but I am so bad at it that it feels like I'm learning how to write all again, like a toddler. But I, I'll persist and maybe get better. Next would be uh, Ariana. 
Thank you. I'm Arianna. I live in New York City. Um, my project is about uh, open community repository for science and art. Uh, and my most recent hobby is actually a long term hobby, which is adding more and more plants to my very, very small apartment and trying to keep them alive, I guess. Hi, I'm Romina. I'm from Rosario, Argentina. And my project is Metadocencia. Um, okay, my hobby is um, practice capoeira. Um, it's alfajores. <laughs> uh, I don't know who is the next. That would be me. I'm Debs again. My project is OLS since I'm a facilitator. And my current mood is the fire emoji because I am very hot. As you can probably see, it's 2000 degrees in Nigeria, which is why I have put my song as Girl on Fire. <laughs> Lovely introductions, everybody. Did we miss anyone? Quick yes, Did we, miss um, we have Veronica who's writing in the chat. Um, and then we have Pradeep. Uh, Pradeep, can you say on the chat if you're able to speak? No, sorry, you have written W. So uh, Debs, do you wanna read Veronica's in introduction please for us? Yes, please. So Veronica, or Verox, which is a cool name, is from Argentina. And her project is Metadocencia Governance 2.0. And she is a project mentor. Hobbies, singing in the toilet. I'll be listening to the meeting from my other job. We promise not to snitch. My English is horrible. Sorry, no, it's not. At least not your written English. Thank you so much for your English. Okay, anybody else? Anybody else? Masibuti is back. So, um, hello and apologies. Yeah, my my network decided to do something else. So, yeah. Um, but my name is Masibidi, and yes, I have W there so that um, I don't have to speak when my network decides to do something else. But um, yeah, my name is Masibidi Sitaka. I am from South Africa, like I said. I work for the South African Center Short, and I am a digital humanities researcher there, focusing on Sesotho language. And my latest hobby is trying new, uh, new, new, new food, like new menus and baking. I'm not good at baking, so I think I, I'm trying to find my way around that side. Right. Thank you. Thank you. And totally understandable and relatable. When your network lets you, please speak. When it doesn't, feel free to type. And I think that's everybody. Huh? Maybe if we missed you, you can just signify by raising your hand. That would be nice. Otherwise, you can type in the chat if you don't feel comfortable speaking. Okay, I think we can move on now. Thank you, Deb. Um, very exciting. We get to work with Debs, and she always makes a smile with uh, her her music taste. Please do add your favorite music songs in the chat if you haven't had the chance to share with us. We will be creating an OLS eight playlist so you can listen for the next four months and perform at the end of four months. I will not ask you to. 
We have also Pradeep who has been with us for many years now and he's joining OLS8 as a mentor and he's here to listen to us. With that, I'm going to present some things and uh, welcome you all very for formally. So welcome. Uh, you're here and we're very excited to have you and we're very, very delighted and grateful that you make time uh, to join us, not just for this cohort, but uh, not just for this call, but for the entire cohort. I want to acknowledge that we all come from different backgrounds and languages. And uh, as Debs has already mentioned, that we have um, an Otter AI transcription happening, which may not be 100% correct, but we upload the recording after proofreading them. So you can come back to it and watch it in your own, own pace as well. So the motivation behind putting up this cohort and all the previous cohort is that all of us who started in this program believe that science can advance only when every researcher shares their work with others. But also there is the problem that researchers are often skeptical about sharing their work openly due to skill gap in open science. And they also fear change. A lot of traditional way of doing science has not embedded open working. Often uh, we are told that we're supposed to protect what we are working on and be unique and not get scooped. However, we've also learned in the last 10 years or more, that that's often not the case. It's always mostly people's personal fear of change that is one of the biggest challenges in adopting open science. So how can we work openly without becoming scientifically vulnerable? How can we actually reap the benefit of open working, which is about collaboration and sharing without being worried about if someone's gonna steal my data? In open science, um, sorry, in Open Seats program, so this is our new labeling of the cohorts, which we are calling Open Seats. It is for people like you who are interested in applying open principle in their work and becoming open science ambassadors in their community. Often a lot of people who join Open Seats program are people who are already aware of open science, but may not have engaged with their community in their own work. So this is a beautiful illustration by Bernice Batu, who's not on the call, but is one of the co-director as well. Um, so this describes the process of 16 week long training and mentoring program, but it actually begins with us identifying um, ourselves as the applicant. So a lot of you identified yourself as applicant of open seats. Uh, you defined your project with different areas of problem you wanna define, where you wanna progress and where you wanna get to in, in four months and the long term. We involve our community members who could be potential mentors as reviewers of your proposals. Then people who have actually potential in terms of um, how open they are already, where they wanna go, as well as viable idea for four months, get accepted in open seats. Then you get invited to join us on Slack, but also you have access to a whole website where all the schedule is there. So even if you're not active on Slack, you should have uh, access to the information. Um, this is a reminder, if you have not read the email uh, that was sent in the beginning with the checklist, please do take some moment to read about them. The program itself involves a lot of people. Of course, it's you and your team um, often and the mentor that you've been um, matched with. Sometimes some of the projects have more than one mentor because the skills that that project needs may have uh, two different degrees that our mentors alone cannot bring. But our mentors also reach out to our experts community to invite skills that they may not jointly have. Your mentors are your guide and they're there to bring accountability and make sure that you are following through the program with the support that you need. So you attend online calls like this where we bring in expert speakers and also facilitators who are supporting us. In this particular call, we don't have an expert speaker, but in the future call, you'll see a lot more diversity of ideas and projects that people have been building in the open around the world. Just a few words about our facilitator who are our hidden role and hidden gem. So they are the people who go back and make sure that the uh, etherpad that you're working on has the correct information, that they help you during the Zoom call, so you know the answers in the chat can be addressed, any technical problem you're experiencing can be solved from our site. 
um, as well as after the call, they are the one who would review, edit, and publish the videos with um, a transcription. In the past, some of our cohort members have also offered to translate these uh, videos. Uh, so we have previous calls available in Arabic and Spanish. So if you would like to go back and check some of them, these are all available on YouTube. You can share that with your community as well. And once you have gone through the whole program, you become a graduate and a fellow of OLS, and you are invited to take on different roles that our community has. For now, of course, what is most important is that this is the third week of 16 week long program. You might have already had one on one mentoring with you that you will continue to have on an alternative basis. And every midweek, every other week, we would also have training calls. We also have included some skill up sessions, which is optional for you. For example, GitHub, we have an Ally Skills Workshop, we have panels on leadership, which you are really, really encouraged to join because they have always been really um, insightful and encouraging. We combine our, our training with hands-on practice. So at the end of each call, you will be given some sort of assignment. And those assignments are for you to develop in your own project. These are not for us to constantly monitor. However, you have the chance to bring that assignment or the document that you're working on for your own community to discuss that with your mentor and ask for specific feedback. A lot of time people actually just post their uh, assignments on the Slack channel, inviting anybody in the community to respond to some of the problems that may, they may have. So if you are someone who feels shy about engaging in Slack channel, in the next few weeks, you will see how easy it is for people to engage you in some conversation. And we really, really encourage you to use that space as much as you would like. Since the launch in 2020, we have run seven cohorts and you're our eighth cohort. We have had over 300 participants, 120 mentors and 150 experts more than that and uh, from all around the world. A lot of people bring depth of uh, diversity in terms of their ideas and the project as well. So you can always find out who were the graduate from previous cohorts who may have similar ideas as you. We, can, we are very happy to connect you with them. Um, again, to, to really emphasize, we don't think that we have something new to offer to you. We really believe that you are experts in your own project and your own community. We have some tools and practices that we have found useful in our journey. And we really believe that a lot of people can benefit from embedding open science practices in their project. So please come into these spaces knowing that you are an expert as well. Although we may have some titles for some people, it doesn't mean that you're not expert. So our origin is in Mozilla. Uh, we were, the, the three, four of us have come from Mozilla Open Leadership Training. And uh, when Open uh, Leadership Training was ending, they wanted to incubate some of the program to make sure that the practices that they had developed continues on in addition to the community needs that people have identified. So they build a um, set of principles and practices and skills that people can use to mobilize their community. So there's a sense of advocacy and mobilization in involving community member in solving the problems that they commonly share. Um, and as a result, when you involve people in, in building solution, it's more likely that they will also take that solution back into their work. Open leaders are defined as people like you who design, build, and empower their project and their community for understanding, sharing, participation, and inclusion. You will see this coming over and over, and we will explore different elements, like what does it mean to design? What does it mean to build and empower? How can we ensure our resources are understandable so anybody can use it? How can we make sure that we are sharing it with proper permission so other people know how to attribute us? And how can we ensure participation and inclusion? So our program is a balance between technical ideas and technical solution alongside the community building practices. So we, we are here together um, and we are really excited for uh, this opportunity to work with you to explore different concepts with a fresh eye and fresh, fresh lens. In a lot of our cohort, people have come back and helped us understand certain concepts we were teaching by adding the nuance that comes from their own community. So I really encourage that when you come across something new that does not really sit well with you, please come back and talk to us about it because your knowledge is equally important for us to improve this for the rest of the community. But we want to take one step at a time. We won't cover everything all at once. We want to explore one thing at a time.
So you have seen this already. This is a plan for the next 16 weeks. Um, you've already had mentor mentee meeting in week two and week three. We are uh, welcoming our cohort. This is the second welcome call. We already have the call from last week online. If you want to watch and learn about people who are not in this call today, uh, please do. They're always really, really uh, nice and welcoming. We will be talking about tooling for collaboration in the coming week, uh, as well as we have designed four, uh, four calls, which are about open science practices, as well as community building. So you would see Open Science Garden 1, Garden 2, Garden 3. We will actually introduce what we mean by that, but uh, in general, you can see them as different practices around data, software, licensing, uh, practical element, as well as community building, which uh, embeds ally skill, inclusion, and diversity. And at the end of the call, we will, end of the 16 week, we will have graduation presentation where you will be able to tell us about what you have done and where you would like to involve community. But these red ones are our optional skill up, skill up calls. So if you've never worked in GitHub and you want to come along and learn something about GitHub as well as launch your first website, we can make that happen within one and a half hour of training. We also have a really um, wonderful panel that has always been one of the most favorite calls of mine, which is called Open Leadership in Practice, where we bring in leaders from different communities to talk about their own journey. We also have tooling for collaboration, which is open source software in practice, which is a specific um, training part that we have built for open source software related projects. And then we have personal management, uh, which, is, uh, which was led last year by Maya around narrative therapy, mental health and personal ecology. How can we sustain our energy so we are not burdening ourselves or burning us out? Okay, so. I'm talking today, but Yo is on the call, but she said that she's not on the call, so but you can identify if she is. Uh, she's the executive director of the program, keeping the ship uh, going. We have Emmy Sang, who is our finance lead. She's the one who's been uh, answering all the micro grants. We're also make sure that we have our uh, finance in place and also encouraging us to think uh, as an organization um, in terms of sustainability. Bernice Batu is the one who has designed all of these slides and uh, has done lots of work on website and she's our technical lead. Paz is on the call. She's our, um, our main coordinator. She's the person who would respond to your query and also make sure that uh, we change anything about the program that isn't uh, working well for you. We have Taj who might be joining later. Patricia and Maya, our uh, resident fellows. We have Debs and Jilaga who are our interns. Uh, we have more fellows um, who, who will who hopefully you will get to meet in the next few weeks. But actually, we are just a small team who are trying to enable the work of a huger, more larger community who are the actual uh, people behind OLS. Um, and you would also learn about them because a lot of them will come back here and talk to us about their own project as experts. You're here with us and we're very, very, very excited. Welcome once again. This is a, a really fortunate space for me to be able to do that with Debs and Yo in the call. And um, I want to again say it's you, it's your leadership and vision that we are excited about. We want to make sure that OLS mentoring and training program, it, it provides you some tools and practices that can help you achieve positive culture change in your community. With that, I'm going to stop and check if we have uh, some call, uh, some questions. Yeah, from you, we have had a lot of evolution of our teams. I've forgotten how many hats we all wear. So definitely Patricia has graduated as a fellow and now she's helping manage our finances. And the reason why I am mentioning all of these, or we are mentioning all of these, is that a lot of you are trying to build your own organization, and you should know that we have struggled and we have learned. So if you have something that you want to ask us, we are very, very happy to share that. Okay, we don't have question. Um, so that brings me to Debs. We have the next breakout session, is that right? Yes, we do. Thank you for the intro. How we got that was so nice. 
something really important I forgot to mention is the code of conduct or you need to make a suggestion, a complaint. Please see in the ether part, there's a link there to different emails that you can send your complaints to. Don't be scared, we don't buy it. If you have to report one of the directors specifically, then you can email the other directors without having the person you want to report No. So for example, oh, yo is always meeting during meetings. That pisses me off. You can email Berenice or Malvika or any of the other directors. Now we're going to go to the breakout room. I mentioned this earlier, but I think we hadn't had a full room then. So I'll explain again what the breakout session is. It's an opportunity for you to talk in more detail about a question that I will be telling you soon. So you can indicate in front of your name what room you would like to be in, whether the written room or the spoken room, where you either write, as the word implies, so put a W in front of your name, or an S if you'd rather speak and can write at the moment. If you're okay with both, for the sake of this call, please choose one so you can be assigned accordingly. Malvika, do we have the Yes, we have breakout room in place. I just want to make sure that we're not confusing you. It's the first breakout and you would have the breakout prompt from line number 124 onwards. So the, the one that you, you've shared, we will come back to it, that second one, but that's okay. You're preparing people. Uh, that's good. You're excited about everyone's vision. We'll come back to it. But right now, we just want to send you in to talk about what's your path to the program. How did you get into working open? How has working open affected your leadership? If you don't see yourself as a leader, leaders, just so you know that you would have more chance to explore that. Um, good. I have assigned people four to three, three to four people in each room. And I'm uh, going to open the room and announce when it's closing in 10 minutes. Enjoy. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you had a nice breakout session. I can tell you this from all the comments I see in the ether part. Just to double check, everyone can hear me. Yes, thumbs up if you can hear me. Hey, perfect. I'd like us to take a moment to just reflect on what was discussed. In a couple of seconds, if anybody wants to share here a question, a comment, an insight from the breakout session, that would be really nice. Yeah, Conrad. Any reflections? Well, I don't know. I was an outlier in my group. Um, I think I think we all shared how working open is not a threat, but it's a very natural way of doing things. Uh, uh, what 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 am I missing? Come on, help me out here, Nicola, Julian. I'm not good at summarizing it. Um, I think we shared that um, we all came from different paths. So there's a social scientist, there's a designer, there's people in biology, and we all share the interest, even though we're looking also to learn from each other and to have sort of different backgrounds, some people new to the open field, some people with some experience. Um, but everyone seems to be looking for shared experiences around here. And, and what was quite exciting is that we were majority Global South, uh, with only Conrad from the North, yeah. This cohort is the first time we have more than 50% of our both applicant and cohort member from the cohort, 
Global South. And I think that reflects from our previous cohort member coming in and collaborating with us to go out in their community and encourage. So, well, that, that wasn't what your team was talking about, but just, just thought that that's uh, fair to mention. And I'm glad that, that accidentally or by intention, I put you all in the same room because I think um, a lot of work that Conrad's program uh, is doing, it, it's very relevant for Nico, but also a little, uh, uh, you know, like just thinking about how rigor and reproducibility looks like in social sciences is another area of reflection. Yeah, uh, folks, please do keep join, keep adding things in the chat. Sorry, Debs, my natural host power takes over. <laughs> Yeah, forgive me. Thank you, Conrad, for opening the floor and for everyone else who shared. So beautiful. I'm going to hand it over to the actual host to go into the next session now. Malvika, more talking for you. Thank you. Sorry. When Debs is so natural, I don't even know why I'm jumping in. Um, I'm going to be more conscious of that as we progress in the cohort. Okay, so this call is has two purposes. One is to for sure make sure that you're onboarded, you feel like you have access to all the things that this program would use and that you would be required to use, meaning uh, access to Zoom and Slack and your mentor and people from the team that you should be reaching out to. The second purpose is to start introducing you to some tools that you would require to design your project. Um, maybe I'm using require too strongly. It's not about requiring. It's definitely about making sure that you you know what is available to you and what toolkits you can use. So we are here. Um, although we're in week three, we're, we're still following the week two content in this call. Our aim is to help clarify and communicate your project idea, purpose, and goal in a way that invites and encourages participation. So again, bringing back this idea of combining technical and domain expertise with the committee management, of course, you know your project really well and you, you know exactly what to develop. However, when you want it to be adopted in open science, you need to think about who the user, who's the contributor, who would be benefiting or who, who will be harmed from it. And therefore making sure that you get the right participation in the project as uh, you require. Our learning objective is that at the end of the session, we will be able to identify some tools to help you design your project in a clear way so new people can understand what is happening, where you are at, where they can get involved, and where is the work headed. So even though they don't get involved right now, they would know in future where they want to get involved. We will introduce Open Canvas and Roadmap to you. The Open Canvas is a single page uh, document which is based on Open Lean, not Open Lean, sorry, Lean Canvas which allows you to look at different resources that you have, different resources that you require, the, the information that you need to convey and that you know about your own project. And then uh, we will have roadmap. We will ask you to build milestones. What are the places that would help you see that you're progressing in your ideas? What kind of tasks you would need in order to accomplish them? And how would you describe it for yourself and other collaborator in the project? So this part of the content will have two talks. Unfortunately, it's me who's going to talk to you, um, but bear with me. I will not talk for the rest of the cohort. Um, you would hear from some wonderful speakers of ours. We'll introduce you to Open Canvas and project road mapping, and each of these will follow with two assignments and that you will have access to at the end of the Etherpad. Okay. So before I show you about Open Canvas, can I get some some finger, uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, or emojis about if you heard about Lean Canvas or any kind of canvas. No, no. Okay, actually it's good that, okay, we do have some consensus. Some people have heard about it. If you've never heard about it, it's actually great because then this is not gonna uh, challenge the knowledge that you already have. But if you have learned about this, this should also be useful because then you can apply open perspective into it. Yeah, Persona Canvas is another one where you look at how people progress into a project, how, get, how, they, how their journey is, which we will also introduce later in this cohort. Okay, so now I'm going to 
talk about open canvas. So we are getting started with thinking about bigger picture. Um, although in order to understand our bigger picture, we uh, do have to still think about what we need in order to accomplish them. So this is a reminder of Mozilla Open Leadership, design, build, empower, understanding, sharing, and participation. And this is connected to in our project for the community. So here we are about designing. This framework we have taken directly from Mozilla Open Leadership, which is adopted from Lean Canvas. It's a way for you to clarify your own project idea on a paper so other people can understand it, including yourself. It also helps you, this process of writing that one single page document helps you uh, think strategically about the project goals, plans, and what is needed. What is the minimum thing that you require? What is the minimum thing that you're going to build? Um, and who are the people for it? Some assumption that Open Canvas uh, wants to make is that your project is being built for the community, or if not for the community, it is oriented towards community. And it also assumes that you will have significant contribution from volunteers. And these volunteers could be paid or unpaid, or these volunteers could also be just full-time team members, and not volunteers actually part of your project. Um, we definitely want to think about openness as an element that is important for people. Um, which is one of the key principles of working open. This is what the open canvas looks like. Uh, you would have a template for that to fill for yourself. So in open canvas, we think about two, your product, a technology, or domain-specific um, project that you're building, and the community about the people who are being involved in it. So this is the flow, and I will go through them hopefully slowly. Um, please do ask me to repeat something that is not clear. But this is, this is an overview. You will have a lot of chance to go back and reflect on them clearly. So we start with problem and we think about solution. And when we are building solution, we think about what are the measure of success? How would we know that the problem has been solved through the solution? Then we talk about required resources in order to build that solution. Do we need to involve a team? Do we need a hardware or software or some money? or expertise. It could be any requirement. Then you think about contributors profile, because in order to fulfill those requirements, as well as build those solutions, you will be working with contributors. Again, those are team members or volunteers. Once you are thinking about contributors profile, you think about target audience. Who are the users of the solution that you're building? Who you're building this for and who will be the early adopter? Then you go back to contributors channel, thinking about your user, you want to now go back to uh, people who will be actually your new contributors. So for example, we always say one of the ultimate goal of open science is to make sure that the user have chance to become a contributor. So they have a say from the very beginning in building your project and not be the, the final uh, acceptor of the solution that we have built without them. So when you think about your user, they are the right target audience to also bring as contributor in the project. And then you also establish some channel through which these people would learn about your project and understand what you're doing. Finally, you want to have a clear message, a unique value proposition. And when, say, when I say unique value proposition, it doesn't mean that you're looking for a novel idea. It could be an idea that exists, but it is actually the, the only idea or one of the ideas that solves the problem you're trying to solve. And it, you will finish the story and benefits. You will build the story and ben benefits for this for the users. So this is maybe where our humanities and social sciences folks would be really helpful to us in refine our story and narrative that is useful and understandable for our community. So now the walkthrough. That was a very quick overview. We're gonna plan. What does the product mean and how does the community develop alongside of those? First is problem. Define your problem by one to three sentences maximum. Uh, this problem could be as simple as, I see a lack of understanding about reproducibility in my community. Or I see that people understand reproducibility, but they don't know how to solve it. Then we talk about solution, your proposed solution. It could be that I want to 
run a webinar, I want to run a workshop, I want to design an event, or I want to develop a software that helps them understand. Key metrics, how will you measure the, the, success, the, the problem, the solution that you have developed to solve the problem? So for example, key metrics could be that X people attended my workshop and X people told me that they have gone back and improved their process. So how would you learn that the solution actually worked out? Resource requirements, for example, here are some experts missing in my team and I need them. Or here's the hardware that's missing in order to actually deliver my product. Or that I need $5,000 so I can um, build my community on the ground. Or it could be as simple as I just need a headphone so I can run a webinar clearly. Then you think about contributors profile. What kind of and what types of contributors are ideal for you? Who are your contributors? What kind of work do they do? And often don't think about just in the product perspective. So like it's possible that you are looking for a software developer, but you're also looking for people who might be helping you onboard these contributors. So they may not have the technical knowledge that you're looking for, but they are really good at social interaction and community engagement. These resources and contributors are really, really important to fulfill the need required to build your project. So maybe you want to think about, maybe this is the area you, you are gonna spend a lot of time in order to refine and come back and create and build your solution. So don't think that you would have the right problem and right solution from the beginning. You may go back and refine them also through the feedback from your mentor or community members. User profile is the target audience and early adopter. Who are you building this for? Who will be adopting it early on? So maybe you're, Early adopter, for example, for reproducibility workshop would be other people who want to solve this problem in their community or students who don't really know what reproducibility means. Contributor channel is where you engage your contributors. How will you gain new contributors? So for example, I will be attending an event where there will be a lot of people who might be interested in my idea. Or I have a newsletter that people are reading, or I have a social media channel where I'll be announcing and inviting, or I will open a call could be anything. Then user channel is how will you gain new user? Where are people? Maybe it, it's a GitHub channel or it is um, a school where you run an event in person. You're, so this is the area where you're engaging your community. It's one to have a community, but actual community power comes from engaging them and involving them. Unique value proposition, what you offer and why you are different. And as I said, this is a little bit overrated. You don't have to be different, but it's possible that your community doesn't have the solution you're trying to build. We have provided some examples that I will not go through to save you some time, um, but do ask us, do ask in the community channel of Slack because all the people who have gone through the program have built their open canvas and you can look at different open canvas to, to get inspired and build your own open canvas. So our idea is that we want to build minimal viable product. So if you've not heard of this, this will come up a lot. Minimal viable product is that what is the minimum thing that you want to achieve and everything else is add on. Everything else will actually, actually just make it much better. Um, so the concept from the startup world, it, so this one is when you're building an app, the actual app software is more important than its interface. Anybody can build and improve interface. It's always better to build a prototype. So for example, if you're building a software, um, try to build a prototype. Don't try to build the full-fledged software from the beginning. Or if you're working with the data, try to work with test data before you actually apply your method on something big. So what if you say, oh, my project doesn't really fit into this open canvas model. Um, so maybe you're trying to do too much. Maybe you need to cut it down. This will really help you to define some specific problem that you can begin by solving. And then you can always go back and solve bigger problems. Okay, so this is one of the templates that we will be sharing with you and you will have the chance to refine it over the next couple of weeks, bring it back to your mentor. And as I said, please share that on Slack or ask each other for um, Feedback. We will ask you to share it openly as well at some point. Good. I was rushing through just so because we have a couple of more things in the call today. But before we go to the next one, 
Um, what are some questions we have in the call? So maybe just something of expectations. I'm not yet entirely clear what my exact project is. Uh, am I supposed to be at this point of time? And if so, what is uh, help? What's the rescue? How do I get like at that place where I can be in line with what the expectations are? Um, we've had that a lot. Like we have had cases where people would write a proposal, come into the program and completely change their proposal because the, the idea is not so much about which exact project. I think you should pick what is most urgent in your project because four months is not a lot. Uh, four months goes by really, really fast. And uh, therefore I would say, what is the next most important thing that I'm trying to solve? Mostly for you, Conrad, because I know you're like trying to launch a new institute and like, you know, hire new people and do a lot of things. So I wouldn't even try to know how many things you're doing. But what is one most important thing that you want to do? It could be as simple as onboarding my team member so they understand what my vision is, right? Because it's much harder to get people to understand what my vision is. And I think just having that open canvas that could be passed to your team members would be a great project. But like I'm, I'm projecting my idea, right? Because you know, this is something that I constantly struggle with when I onboard people. I feel like I have to revise my onboarding process because the team's process has changed. So it's never like a finished product. Um, have this conversation with whoever your mentor is. But of course, the wireless team members are also happy to have chat. You know, Paz is there. You can message you and me and whoever, you know, is available would love to chat with you. Um, yo, what, what is <laughs> XUI designer? Tell me, what did I say? You said anyone can do a user interface. <laughs> no, no, I meant like maybe anyone can do the interface and you were, maybe that wasn't right. Not anyone can do that. I cannot do the user interface, honestly. Like my user interface would look very 90s style. I have done user interface <laughs> using 90s framework. So no. Also, today we had lots of conversation about user experience in one of the teams where we were saying, oh, the assumption is everybody know what user experience is. So they never hire someone specifically. Um, and that's a very hard thing. And I think Open Canvas definitely have that user design and user expertise um, related, like you, you step back and you think about it. So yeah, forgive me. <laughs> I'm gonna follow this up later. <laughs> to the court uh devs are you our next do we have the next breakout on vision now yes quick disclaimer if it appears that i'm darker i did not get it done they caught the bar so it's a bit darker where i am i did hear amy say during one of the cohorts she said you are the unique value and not just the project. So there's no pressure whatsoever. You don't have to have everything figured out at this point. Take it slow. Even right now, if you feel overwhelmed by this video, deep breath, <laughs> calm down. You can always rewatch it. We will be going to the second breakout room, the one you was very excited about earlier, where you share your <laughs> vision statement with the others in the breakout session. Please be kind enough to summarize so that everyone gets a chance to speak. Malvika, are we good? Yes, um, I have to apologize. I did not randomize you all. So give me two minutes because I was too interested in hearing what Debs was saying. I'm going to exchange some folks into different rooms so you have the chance to talk. Um, while she's doing that, I'm going to offer one quick suggestion. Uh, this never happens. I mean, it actually always happens that we struggle for time as we get to the end of calls. Uh, we may have to end up dropping or scrooching the last talk about road mapping. Uh, but there is one recorded from the previous call. Um, but I know people really value being able to talk in the breakout rooms. So we'll make sure you still have a good amount of time in the breakout rooms. Uh, I hope that's right. <laughs>
I think I have been, I have done like somewhat a, a good enough job, if not perfect. We approve. We approve. Uh, okay, Conrad and Julian, you would be still in the same room, but I'm opening the room. The next one is for eight minutes and we'll close the room in eight minutes. Can I be in breakout rooms too? Okay. Oh, wow, that's a lot of notes. Wow. I see some really lovely patient statements here. Wow. Okay, before I get too carried away reflecting on vision statements, as usual, would anybody like to share? Just for a few seconds, time. Ah, right, TikTok. So I'll just hand over to Malvika to quickly rush on to the roadmap. Thanks, Debs. And as you said, we often run into this problem, um, but that's okay. We'll get through this all together. Uh, and I hope that conversation from the room will continue on Slack. So I'm going to very, very quickly run through road mapping. Road mapping would be one of the most important thing and that you can spend a lot of your time on, but start thinking about it right away. So this is also part of designing process. So we're still on design. Why do we need to build a roadmap? Um, it is very, very important when you're starting to work on anything is to take some time and plan ahead. Share that plan with anybody who you would be working with. Um, if you win in a project where people said, oh, we're going to do this and they meet you next week and say, oh yeah, but today we're doing this. And then you're doing that. And like suddenly you've lost all the time and all you've, you've also in, discouraged people who are working with you. So I definitely think that documenta documentation is a form of kindness to your team members and roadmap is a step towards it. If you lay out clearly what you're doing now, where you're gonna go next, what you're trying to achieve, that just builds a shared expectation that are realistic. This is a document that summarizes your project vision, includes timeline for the task and help identify you, where you are at right now, how you want to reach the end goal and what kind of steps you will be taking in order to reach them. What are required in all those steps? What are, what are some dependency? Are there some people who should be doing the task? Are there some requirement of resources that, that are needed for the task? This also help you prepare properly so you don't jump into the project before you have planned everything. It also help you schedule. Um, and this is why we were talking about minimal viable product. Don't try to do too much because if you schedule too, too much for too little time, your ideas may not reach the goal that you're hoping to, or you might end up spending a lot of time in one place rather than having to see it move. It also helps you track goal, track your own progress. Um, so for example, you can always come back and reflect on where we are at, with how urgent is this to be done today or tomorrow. Uh, the point that you was talking about, you know, we can burn ourselves out. Don't try to schedule too much um, too often. Share that with any, anyone who might want to contribute. So in the future, we will be talking about how to build your repository where you're going to write about all of these. But this is a preparation of document that you would be doing offline or just with your team members. So what goes on the roadmap? Project summary and welcome. So if I arrive to your project page, I should know what you're doing. And maybe you know I should feel welcome to be part of that. Um, in this, you would have important what your visitors or contributors or potential users should know. It will help them understand what, what you're doing right now and how does that link to your roadmap directly. And it also provides summary of the project. So, you know, talking a bit about background of why you started this project and why you want to do this project. It also helps you give clear um, motivation for rest of your roadmap, why it's important to do them. Then also you talk about how to get involved. So if I read your project and I feel welcome, I would be like, yes, I wanna work with Debs. So Debs will actually tell me how I can become a new contributor right away. So that would be point to some of the documents in the project that I can immediately work on. So it could be that there are some bugs that needs fixing, but you don't have time right now and you would appreciate some help. 
It could be point to documentation that they should check out. It could be as simple as a training material that they should know in order to be part of your project. Then timeline. This is very much about, you know, this month we are here, next month we will be there, next to next month we will be there, in the end of the year we will be here. Uh, you don't need to think that long term if you're still building your idea, but you can definitely build it for the next few months. It allows you to organize your tasks to complete your project around those milestones. So the milestones are by the end of this month, we should have a repository with an introduction page and a roadmap. By the end of second month, I should involve another contributors who can help me build the documentation. It could be a very simple step. Um, map what you're working on now and where you're going next. Pick one to three milestone for your timeline. Um, so the, we will ask you, we will give you a template where you will be listing all the tasks that is required to achieve all your milestone. Um, and then you would also include information for each task that is easy for your contributors. So for example, this milestone requires starting a document, uh, creating a help page, creating the contact information. You can show an example of what success looks like. Maybe you have reference to a different project where you can point them to saying that at the end of this milestone, this is what my project would look like. Or it could be that a successful delivery of a presentation around what you're doing. You also want to provide pointers to get started. So don't assume that people bring the same skills that you already have. Uh, maybe they want to upskill themselves. Maybe they want to refresh their idea on a particular problem that you're talking about and you have a video online on YouTube, or you have a documentation or a paper that you publish that they should know. Um, again, reinforce your vision, why this task is important and why your project cannot happen without this particular task. We have uh, different ways to share roadmaps. So you can have a .md, which is a markdown file, and we'll talk about it in GitHub. Uh, so you would create a roadmap.md. It could be as simple as a web page where you have provided them. You, have, you will have access to, to this document, so please come back and look at them. And unfortunately, I haven't left myself enough time to do that right now on the call. Yeah, so what we looked at, you're gonna write your project summary, which includes your project name, a shorter version of the description, including the vision that you were talking about. Pick one to three milestones and describe them in detail through different tasks that needed, who can do it and what they should know. Let people know how they can get involved. Maybe your project is not ready to get people involved, but think, start thinking about it already and share them. You, you'll have to update them often. Once you finish these milestones, you might want to tell where you're going next. Okay, so now create a roadmap for your project. Don't create it now, but you will have time uh, in the next few weeks again. So with that, I have saved one, one minute. Um, I'm happy to stick around on the call with you all if you want to ask anything else, but I want to quickly show you some of the places where you will find assignments if my screen can stop. Yeah, so this is the document that you have access to. Um, want to remind you that there is micro grant if you need micro grant to buy yourself uh, some data, the high speed internet or headphone or webcam, anything that you need, please do reach out to PAS. Uh, you also have information about microgram in here. All the things I talked about, they're all linked here. Uh, we will ask you to create an issue. Don't worry about it until week five because we will be teaching you about GitHub. But if you are comfortable with GitHub already, you can begin already by clicking on it. Um, there are lots of post call reminder for you. Please do have a look at this and you will also get an email from us reminding you what we covered and what you will be doing. Made it on time. I made it on time. Thank you all for sticking around with us. I'm so excited that we will have a chance to work with you all. And I'm very, very delighted to be contacted for anything that could be useful. So with that, I'll stop the call, but I'll stick around for another five minutes if someone wants to talk. <laughs>